Good morning. Take a moment and welcome those next to you. Our order of service this morning is Divine Service Setting 1 on page 151. Our opening hymn is number 498. We sing verses 1, 2, 3, and 7. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Almighty God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The intro is printed in the bulletin. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Hallelujah. O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom have you made them all. 
the earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you. Give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant us in our day by the same Spirit to have a right understanding in all things 
and evermore to rejoice in his holy consolation. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the day of Pentecost is from Genesis chapter 11 and also serves as our text for the sermon this morning. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as people migrated from the east, they found it plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. And then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be dispersed over the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of man had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. And nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and there confuse their language, so that they may not understand one another's speech. And so the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, its name was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth, and from there the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the book of Acts, the second chapter. And when the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. And suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. And divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there were dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven. And at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus in Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongue the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others, mocking, said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be made known to you, and give ear to my words. For these men are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel, and in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, even on my male servants and female servants. In those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and vapors of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
applies to the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I will come to you. If you loved me, you would have rejoiced, because I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you before it takes place, so that when it does take place, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you. For the ruler of this world is coming. He has no claim on me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father. Rise, let us go from here. This is the Gospel of the Lord. We make confession of our Christian faith by words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things, visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seen. We sing hymn 497.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text is the Old Testament lesson which was just read. From the standpoint of the church year, Pentecost is like a doorway. It takes us to a new place. We've celebrated the life, death, and resurrection and ascension of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we're now led by the Holy Spirit into practice, an opportunity to put the good news of God into the miseries of our days. The 143rd Psalm says, teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your good spirit lead me on the level ground. And that is what the spirit leads us today. As we begin this Pentecost journey, we stand and wonder at the tremendous event, at the outpouring of the Holy Spirit upon the people of God. We rejoice over the Spirit's power at work in our hearts and minds. We who have been scattered by sin away from God have been brought back by the power of the Spirit who has called us by the gospel. For by nature we strive against God. We throw ourselves into spiritual chaos and despair. But by God's Spirit, we are healed. And the Holy Spirit speaks to us tenderly, reconciling us to God once again. And having been reconciled to God, we can also be reconciled to one another. Genesis chapter 11 takes us to the story of the Tower of Babel. A story that happened many, many years ago. But it is also a contemporary story happening today. For those ancient people on the plains of Shinar moved away from God. And so do we. We might be centuries removed from the people at Babel and from their activity, but we're only one thought away from thinking like they did. And when your heart's not in the right place, then your mind's going to invent all kinds of evil. For it wasn't the building of the tower itself, but the motivation beneath the surface that convinced them that they were gods. Their primary sin? Idolatry. They wanted to make a name for themselves so that they would be great in the eye of history. And often, smart and intelligent people tend to ignore God. That's the temptation of human intelligence. We tend to think that we can do everything ourselves, that we don't need a God to take care of things for us. We're quite able to do it ourselves. In our pride and our ignorance, we even convince ourselves that if we work hard enough, we can make payment for our sins and earn our own salvation. The Apostle Paul speaks about this to the Corinthians when he says, the word of the cross is folly to those who are perishing, but to, it, to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of, of God, the world did not know God through wisdom, 
It pleased God through the folly of what we preach to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks seek wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and folly to Gentiles. But to those who are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. The wisdom and intelligence of the Corinthians was taking them away from the true fount and source of wisdom, Jesus Christ. The story of the Tower of Abel should shake us to the roots, for it puts up for examination by God our superior intellect. Indeed, everything that we do. And the Lord's response to the people at the tower is his response to us also. God responds decisively. He goes down to look at, his pro at this project, which is more an attempt to become godlike than merely building a great tower. They're doing something that might be termed good, industrious, laudatory even if it were not for the motive behind it. But God sees through all the hype and stamps it out. And there is nothing sweet about the way that God punishes sin. If we're thinking clearly, God's actions against the evil at Babel will make us tremble at our sin. For instinctively we sense that this is a story about us, about our pride. The Lord confuses the languages, and now the people can only babble at each other. By our sinful nature, we lose the ability to communicate also with one another, but especially with God. And if we look to the law, we find that we can't do it. But remember the gospel. For the gospel is simple. God sends the people away so that they do not fall deeper into sin. It's similar to the casting of Adam and Eve out of the garden so that they would not eat of the tree of life as sinful, rebellious people and be that way forever, enemies of God. God threw them out, posted a fiery angel to guard the entrance and keep them away. Here God confuses the language and the people disperse throughout the world. And while we suffer from such confusion in our inability to communicate with in peace and love to one another, we still have God's plan. A plan by which he will open up communication again and forever. And God's plan is revealed to us and to the people of all ages at Pentecost. For at just the right time, God sends the clear word into the world. The writer of Hebrews says, In the past God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets, at many times and in various ways. But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son. God has never stopped talking to his people. However, as we read the Old Testament promises, we know that they point to the New Testament, to fulfillment. We know, and the writer of the book of Hebrews reminds us, that Jesus Christ is the Word, the clear Word made flesh, the ultimate communication from God. 
and God will now bring the chaotic world back to himself. And he does it by speaking decisively and clearly in Jesus, the word made flesh. There are many voices that clamor for our ears. There's much babbling in the world today. The voices beckon to us, promising fulfillment in a new age of untold happiness. These are but echoes from Babel. We need to turn to the voice of God as he speaks to us in Jesus. That is the reason Jesus, the very word of God himself, came into the world. And he makes himself understood by the faithful. We've passed through the first part of the church year. We've witnessed the events by which God sent his word into the world. We have heard the words Jesus spoke to his disciples and to us. He tells us that he is the way to the Father, that he has e the words of eternal life. We've heard him say that for our sakes, he, the Son of Man, will be handed over to the cross where he will die and then will be raised again. We have the additional witnesses of Peter and Paul and the others who have spelled out so wonderfully what his life, death, and resurrection mean. And they mean everything to us. It means our rising from the dead. It means our life eternally. In the giving of the Holy Spirit, these truths become ours forever. For this counselor, this helper, this advocate comes to lead you to the truth, to Jesus in a new and a complete way. As we learned in confirmation, I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. And in the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it in the one true faith, Jesus Christ our Lord. And in this Christian church he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day he will raise up me and all the dead and will give eternal life to me and to all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. With the coming of the Holy Spirit, the wall of, communica of communication between God and man is broken down. The curse of Babel is reversed. In Jesus, we are now family once again. Through the Spirit's presence, we're enabled to talk gospel to one another, even to the farthest reaches of the universe. And that, God, that voice of God speaking through our mouth will be understood and believed. For Jesus has done all that is necessary to make this possible. By his death on the cross, he's broken down the barriers between Babel and heaven. And he gives us the gift of his spirit so that we can talk to one another and to God. And that conversation is not babble at all. It's praise and worship, prayer and adoration. And it will continue forever. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. Amen. We continue with the gathering of the offering.
could rise and sing the offer. In our prayers this morning, we remember Lindy Roth, who underwent gallbladder surgery this week and is recovering now at home. Also, Laura Miller and Gavin Brown, who were united in holy matrimony yesterday afternoon here at Trinity. We pray. O oh, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, our only help in time of need, look with favor upon your servant who is ill. Assure her of your mercy, deliver her from the temptations of the evil one, and give her patience and comfort in this illness. If it please you, restore her to health or give her grace to accept this tribulation with courage and hope. O oh Lord God, Heavenly Father, you have sanctified marriage for your people, and we thank you for the blessedness that you have shown for Gavin and Laura. Open their hearts always to receive more of your love, that their love for each other may never grow weary, but deepen and grow through every joy and sorrow shared. And almighty and everlasting God, you've given the church your Holy Spirit, that he may abide with it forever. We thank you for the inspiration, the guidance and comfort which come from him. We pray that he may ever direct and rule our lives, and that daily he may increase in us the knowledge and love of yourself and of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Shed forth his many gifts of grace upon every estate of man in your holy church. Grant that your believing people may receive the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. To our rulers grant the spirit of justice and mercy, and to all our people the spirit of faithfulness and peace. O you who sends forth your spirit and renews the face of the whole earth, shed abroad in our hearts his love, joy, and peace, that he may recall us from our forgetfulness of you and bring us back to your heart by the holy way of repentance and faith. Cast us not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from us. Restore unto us the joy of your salvation, and uphold us with your free spirit. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of that same spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For all this the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying,
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O oh Father, be all glory, honor, and worship. With the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And in the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament and my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 912. Amen.